uh, I mean, bro, you're facing Mike Tyson. Like, let's be real. Like, don't even, don't you can't even fight. like, you can't even try to even say what I'm saying is is out of line because, bro, you're literally fighting Mike Tyson, dog. Pros have started to warn Jake Paul ahead of his much anticipated fight with boxing legend Mike Tyson. Michael Benson just tweeted on X saying, Mike Tyson at 57, showcasing his ripped physique ahead of the Jake Paul fight on July 20th. He shared this video of Tyson, showing how Tyson is still in shape even at the age of 57. Mike's close confidant and legendary fighter, Zab Judah, assures fans that the upcoming multi-million dollar pay-per-view spectacle is far from a mere publicity stunt. Asked about the Mike vs. Jake battle, Judah admitted, I personally think that the Mike Tyson, that we know, the animal, the lion, he's going to show up. That is scary. Judah painted a vivid picture of Mike's mentality as resembling that of a ferocious beast inside the ring, a force that the inexperienced Paul will undoubtedly struggle to contend with come their Netflix bout. He said, if Mike is taking this fight on, and evidently he knows exactly what he's doing, and trust me, Mike is going to be Mike. Critics lambasted Tyson's recent bout against Roy Jones Jr., dismissing it as not nothing more than a glorified sparring session. However, Judah is optimistic that July's upcoming showdown will offer a distinct and compelling experience. He said, nah, I mean, I don't get that from Mike. When Mike gets in the ring, he hands me business. So if he took on a Jake Paul challenge, Jake Paul is going to have a problem. Judah emphasized that Mike Tyson wouldn't hesitate to strive for an early finish before the completion of 12 rounds. He said, I can tell you from the mindset of a fighter, he has been great at what he's done. He's been given a great gift. He took great control and responsibility of his physique and everything. Everything. Judah further added that Tyson still feels compelled to continue fighting at the age of 58, conveying a sense of admiration. He mentioned that if Tyson, referred to as the champ, decides to proceed, he will aim for the highest and the most distinguished challenges. Judah added, so he still feels like at the age of 58 that he still wants to do it. You know what I mean? So, hey, listen, one thing about the champ, if the champ is going to do it, he is going to go for the biggest and the best. Asked whether he expected a knockout, Judah replied, of course, Tyson. I don't think Jake can knock out Tyson. No way. Of course, I will put some money on it. On the other hand, his wife Christina, who says they had heard that the fight was set up in the last year, added, this is going to be his last fight, I believe. So if he's going out, I believe he's going to go out with a bang. Yeah, I don't think Jake's going to be able to understand who he is in the ring with. They both admitted that Paul and Tyson are friends, but Judah warned, remember the rules. Mike said there are no friends in the ring. He's the one that said it. You know what he is saying. Meanwhile, Daniel Cormier argues that Jake Paul stands to gain little from triumphing over Mike Tyson. Cormier harbors doubts about Tyson's upcoming bout against the much younger Paul. Somebody was like, would you wrestle Kyle Snyder for charity? I'm like, no, he's going to beat the brakes off of me. He won't, he won't, he won't like, he won't like play with me. He won't give me anything to make me yeah, feel you know, about let's, this. Let's, let's gonna mix this it shit up a little bit. He speculates that if Paul were to triumph over the season Tyson, it could potentially sour Tyson's relationship with his fans. Cormier said, Mike Tyson's going to be in there at almost 60. Bro, he's almost 15 years older than me. Almost. Can you just beat on Mike Tyson? Paul could face devastating consequences if he chooses to engage in a physical altercation with Mike Tyson. Regardless of the outcome, he finds himself trapped in a lose-lose scenario. Further, Cormier expressed doubts regarding Paul's thought process, suggesting he might not have fully considered the implications. He explained that if Paul were to decisively defeat Tyson, public reaction could be overwhelmingly negative. Additionally, he highlighted the potential end of something significant. If Paul were to knock out Tyson emphatically, Cormier added, I don't know that he thought this one through as much as he probably should have. If you just go out there and you just beat the shit out of Mike Tyson, everybody's going to be really mad at you. If he knocks Mike out, if he just starches Mike Tyson, it might be over, bro. Cormier further commented on the situation, noting the affection people have for Mike Tyson and highlighting this as a risk factor in the fight. He expressed uncertainty about Jake Paul's decision, suggesting that Paul might have erred in choosing to fight Tyson, as causing harm to Tyson could result in negative repercussions for Paul. Cormier further added, he's very lovable and that's the danger in this fight. I don't know. I think Jake Paul might have made a mistake on this one, because if he beats up on Mike, dude is in trouble. However, Ryan Garcia dismisses any chance of Jake Paul defeating Mike Tyson. Garcia believes that Jake's sole shot at emerging victorious in this bout lies in pre-arranging the match to ensure his triumph over Tyson. Otherwise, Tyson is poised to deliver a knockout blow within four rounds. The uncertainty remains as to whether Tyson will show leniency toward Paul. I know what you're tapping into, so it's like hard for me to go against you. Um, I just think Mike is like a whole different animal, bro. I've met him in person as you have. 
and the dude is built different. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah, mean, he's strong. He's right? strong. Like just shaking his hand I, when yeah. we just filmed this. Shit, I've never felt a hand stronger than that yeah. before. Like, and I don't know if he wasn't like squeezing. He wasn't like trying to squeeze. It was, a, it was, it was like hand. real. It was just like real. Garcia recounts his encounter with Tyson, emphasizing Tyson's imposing stature, which he describes as enormous, and acknowledging the intimidation factor he naturally exudes. Ryan Garcia said, I've met Mike Tyson. He's huge. There's no way Jake Paul is taking it. Jake's journey into the world of boxing started later than most, but he's steadily carving his path to becoming a formidable cruiserweight contender. The looming question remains, can he withstand the formidable power Power and lightning fast skills that Tyson brings to the ring? According to Garcia, the only way Jake Paul wins this fight is if they already have it coordinated for him to win. That's it. That's the only way. Has that happened in this sport before? Yeah, it has. Mike Tyson went a couple of rounds with Roy Jones Jr. During the showcase bout between Mike and Roy, observers couldn't help but notice a peculiar trend. Mike seemed to be holding back his punches, predominantly targeting the body. The match concluded with a rather anticlimactic eight-round draw. Garcia believes, I think Mike only needs four to beat Jake Paul. I don't think he even needs four. I think if Mike hits him with one good one, it's over. But that's just me. I've met Mike. Mike is a different breed, bro. When he steps in the room, you're like, all right, now I know why people are scared. If Tyson intends to bring the fight with all his might, he must aim to finish Jake off within the first couple of rounds. Otherwise, he'll drain his energy. Garcia said, I want to see live reaction when Jake Paul gets knocked out. I don't have any hate. I've let it go too long. Jake, on the other hand, has been aggressively seeking fights with YouTubers, MMA fighters, and even Tommy Fury. However, he has yet to step into the ring with a truly formidable opponent. Garcia further added, Jake is making a mockery out of boxing. He's stealing so much money from these kids. I'll give him credit. He is supporting a lot of fighters. I have respect for him. I've known him for years. Ryan disclosed his significant involvement in developing Jake's boxing skills. He suggested inquiring about the specific house in Victorville where Jake learned boxing, implying that he was the one who initiated Jake's journey into boxing. It's like real, and I was like, oh, Bro, I'm going to give you props, dog. Bro, he's got a punch. Bro, I'm gonna give you props, bro. You're different for this, bro. Like, I've never even imagined some, bro. So, bro, like, respect if if, if this like really going down and like you're not like it's not pre-planned. I'm not saying it is, bro. I'm just saying like if it's not and it's a real. Hey bro, like, I'm gonna pray for you, bro. Meanwhile, Ryan claimed responsibility for guiding Jake to Canelo's gym. He said, inquire about the specific Victorville residence where he learned boxing. Pose the question. I initiated the conversation. And who do you suspect guided him to Canelo's gym? Yours truly. He further declared that he was the catalyst behind Jake's career, stating that he was the one who instilled in Jake the belief that he could transform and profit from boxing. He said, I'm the one that started his career. Little did you know. I'm the one that gave him this idea that he could change and make money off it. I'm I'm the one that did it. Why do you think I'm the one that said, dang, I shouldn't have done this? Ryan confessed that he now questions his own actions, indicating some regret over his role in shaping Jake's path. He concluded by saying, I'm not trying to knock some other man's hustle down. Let him do what he has to do. But one day, he's got to see me. When I beat him, just say, Ryan, you're my favorite fighter. On the flip side, promoter Oscar De La Hoya finds himself torn over the upcoming boxing spectacle, pitting Jake Paul against Mike Tyson. You say you want to be a world champion. You say you want to take this sport serious, then take it serious. Although De La Hoya acknowledges the appeal of attracting a broader audience to the sport, he expresses concern over the optics of a matchup between Paul and Tyson, who hasn't entered the ring in 19 years since 2005. De La Hoya said, It's going to bring more eyeballs to the sport of boxing, but my beef with it is, it's not the right image for us as a serious sport. De La Hoya believes that Jake possesses the vigor and endurance of youth necessary to outlast Tyson and claim victory, provided the Texas Commission approves the bout as a legitimate boxing contest. He added, Jake Paul, I commend him for what he's doing. Jake Paul can get to a world title, but if he takes a different route, this route going up against Mike Tyson, it's just not the right one for me. I love Mike Tyson and respect Mike Tyson, especially if Texas okays this fight to be an officially sanctioned right. Nevertheless, he contends that Tyson possesses enough power to potentially knock out Jake with a single, well-aimed punch. Furthermore, it's unexpected that Tyson still maintains superior hand speed compared to Jake. I don't know how that's going to work. Mike Tyson is 60 years old. Jake Paul is 26 
27. If Jake Paul wants to take boxing seriously, take a different route, said De La Hoya. He believes Jake ought to climb the ladder like traditional fighters, taking on challengers to earn the opportunity to compete for a world championship. De La Hoya added, take the route that all the other fighters take. Tough fights up the ranks. Top 10 fighters, top 5, world champions. Not this route with Tyson. That's not the way to do it. Jake's sole bout in the boxing ring was against Tommy Fury, a competitor limited to the British domestic level. It's evident that Fury doesn't belong to the echelons of world-class boxing. What, what is this? This is not a popularity contest. I, I'm, I'm actually praising Jake Paul here to take this serious because I really truly feel if he fights the right fights and, and, and takes the right path to that world title, he can actually get there. If Jake truly aspired to carve out a substantial career in the sport, he would be pitting himself against formidable opponents. According to Oscar De La Hoya, it's going to be big business. I can understand Mike Tyson wanting to do this, the itch that he has, because I have it every day. Sometimes we have to say, it's not our time anymore, and I love Mike. De La Hoya also expressed his hope for Tyson to deliver an exceptional performance, highlighting the positive attention it would bring to the sport of boxing, which is his main interest. He further added, I hope he goes out there and puts on a performance of a lifetime. I love the eyeballs it's going to bring boxing, and that's all I care about. Furthermore, De La Hoya commented on Tyson's enduring strength, suggesting that Tyson's punching power remains formidable and could lead to a decisive victory if he manages to land a solid hit on Jake Paul. He speculated on the potential impact if Tyson were to engage in a genuine fight, emphasizing his lasting ability to deliver knockout punches. De La Hoya believes that Tyson still has the punching power. That's the last thing that goes until you're in your grave. If Tyson catches him with a good one, it lights out for Jake Paul. Imagine Tyson in a real fight. He still has that punching power. Jake will face a tough challenge evading Mike's punches in the initial rounds as Mike is keen on reaching Jake's chin. To counter this, Jake will likely employ a strategy of constant movement, continuously evading Mike's advances, and clinching whenever necessary. De La Hoya said, if Jake Paul has the conditioning as a young man that he is, he should be able to tire out Tyson. Yeah, he should be able to tire out. That's the history of the game. Again, one punch from Tyson can do it, and it's sayonara. On the other hand, KSI expresses apprehension regarding Jake Paul's upcoming challenge. Paul is set to face Mike Tyson. He said, I just feel Jake's legacy will be, he can knock out old people. KSI finds it difficult to envision a scenario where 27-year-old Jake emerges victorious against Tyson. He argues that even if Jake were to win, skeptics would undermine his triumph by emphasizing that he defeated a middle-aged opponent who hasn't competed professionally in nearly two decades. KSI added, I think it's super sad. I don't know why Jake took it. It's a lose-lose. If he knocks out Mike Tyson and he's beaten an old-age pension, he's 57. Mike Tyson is 57 years old. Yes, in his prime. This would have been crazy, but now it's just sad. Looking at the bright side, Jake is poised to pocket his largest payday yet, granting him the opportunity to relish the earnings from the Tyson bout, regardless of the outcome. However, KSI added, there's going to be so many people watching. Millions and millions. Everyone is going to know him as a guy that knocked out an old Mike Tyson. The spectacle of the fight serves one purpose, to captivate the audience. What other reason could there be for Jake's eagerness to step into the ring with Mike Tyson, if not to bask in the spotlight, amass considerable wealth, and amplify his fame. I'm sure you have some opinions about Jake Paul. Mike Tyson. <laughs> Mike Tyson is 57 years old. Honestly, I just think it's sad, bro. I don't know why Jake took it. It's a lose-lose. Everyone's gonna know him as the guy that knocked out on old it, Mike Tyson. At his age, if you get hit by one solid Turn Jake Paul prune, punch, prune juice. you're prune juice. If Jake truly aimed to test his skills against a formidable opponent, he would step up and challenge either former IBF cruiserweight champion Jai Opataya or the seasoned Maris Breedis to a match in the ring. Talking about his fight with Tyson, Jake's brother Logan Paul told KSI, I don't think Jake is going to knock him out. In a reply to it, KSI said, but imagine if he gets knocked out by Jake. Logan admitted that such an outcome would be undesirable. He referred to the situation as a lose-lose yet acknowledged that the significant advantage would be the event's broadcast on Netflix. Logan said, That would suck. That's where it's a lose-lose, but the win would be the fact that it's on Netflix, one of the first live sporting events. For both Mike and Jake, the bag, I don't know if you can say no. This battle boils down to one thing, money. Whether Jake emerges victorious or faces defeat, the substantial financial reward will soothe any lingering guilt or disappointment, allowing him to reconcile with himself regardless of the outcome. According to Logan, I still think Tyson can hit hard, but can he take hits? At his age, 
stage, if you get hit by one solid Jake Paul punch, you're prune juice. The anticipation of the fight is palpable, especially for coach Rafael Cordero, who is eagerly preparing the legendary Tyson for this monumental challenge. Cordero predicts that Paul will be in for a rude awakening at the AT&T Stadium. Cordero said, This fight won't be a massacre. It's going to be a very technical match, because we have a kid on the other side that can box and isn't afraid. He also highlighted Tyson's powerful punches, asserting that it would be inevitable for Paul to feel the impact. Cordero anticipates that once Paul experiences Tyson's strength, the direction of the fight will become clearer, making the event especially intriguing to witness. Cordero further added, Mike has such heavy hands, and it will be impossible not to touch Jake. Jake will feel Mike's hands, there's no other way, and that's when we'll have an idea on how the fight will go. It's going to be interesting to see. Moreover, he has been doing training sessions with Tyson. Eh, today was the day, you know? Play with fire, sometimes happen. <laughs> as Tyson steps into the ring at 58 years old, Cordero remains assured that Paul's composure will wane as Tyson's punches find their mark, inducing a sense of panic in him. He said, Panic! Jake will panic! That's the goal. Our goal is to keep Jake in panic the entire fight, or for as long as he can take it. Cordero praised Paul's boxing career, though. He said Paul stopped being a YouTuber a long time ago to become a serious boxer, and reiterated that Paul deserves respect from the combat sports community. Cordero added, He's doing great fights against against great champions, facing good opponents and building a relatively good career, not only financially speaking, but in terms of entertaining. And on the other side, we have Tyson, who carries many generations with him. As per Cordero's statement, the showdown between Tyson and Paul stands as an authenticated bout within the realm of professional boxing. However, the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation told MMA Fighting that no decision has been made on July 20th. Commenting on it, Cordero said, Unlike the first camp, Tyson won't be coming off 15 years away from the ring. He's been training ever since and that makes all the difference. It's going to be good. We still have four more months for the fight, so he will be ready. Cordero acknowledged the age difference between the fighters and the fact that Paul has been competing more frequently. Cordero added, there's the age difference, and there's the factor that Paul is competing more often, but he's facing someone with enormous experience. Mike doesn't train for some time, and when he returns, the explosiveness, the movement, it's like he never stopped. Furthermore, Cordero stressed the importance of technique over mere power in the upcoming fight, recognizing Jake Paul's legitimate boxing skills. He said, more than who hits the hardest, it's about the technique. Jake has good boxing. You can't say otherwise. He's winning the fights, and his loss is a split decision to a legit boxer, not a MMA champion, and that shows the kid knows how to box. Cordero expressed satisfaction with Tyson's current physical condition, dismissing any concerns raised by a 2023 video depicting Tyson using crutches. Asserting that Tyson is now in top form, Cordero said, he has had a lot of back pain ever since he was a kid. We're always taking care of his back in training. He moves a lot to the side, and that takes a toll. And since he travels a lot, he was using that to help him posture up after being on flights for long hours. Meanwhile, Mike Tyson continues to captivate audiences even at 57 years old. His recent social media updates are painting a vivid picture of his enduring power and ferocity. Without explicitly stating it ourselves, Tyson's posts reveal his relentless determination and ability to cause serious damage to his opponents. On the first day of training, Tyson tweeted, The fun has just begun. In this video, the focus was on executing powerful strikes and evading incoming blows from his training companion. It's day one, the fun just begun. On the second day of training, Tyson tweeted, I'm getting ready for you. In this footage, Tyson's formidable strength takes center stage. As the clip nears its conclusion, a forceful left jab from Tyson propels the mitts right out of his sparring partner's grasp. Day two, I'm getting ready for you. And now, on the third day for training, he tweeted, You still want to fuck with me? Here is the complete video. Day three, you still want to fuck with me? As you can see, Tyson showed effortlessly lifting and repeatedly tossing a hefty gym ball onto the floor, a demanding exercise known for its strain on the back muscles. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos.